Okay, so this is the Anytone 878 UV Plus, and I'm making this video because this is my first radio. I've had an amateur radio license for actually about nine years, but I've never used it. So this is the first radio I purchased, and I've been really frustrated with the experience of trying to actually get this working. So I decided I'd make a video since um, Bridgecom's support does not seem to help new operators get situated. The first thing you're gonna to have to do is make sure that you've downloaded the uh, Bridgecom software. So there are plenty of instructions on how to do that online, so I won't go through that. Today I'm actually recording this on a Mac and I'm using VirtualBox to run Windows and that's worked okay. So and, uh, Bridgecom does have some support that tells you how to do this installation, so I'm not gonna to touch that. I'm just gonna be showing you how to get your radio situated so that you can actually get on the air. First thing we have to do is plug it in. It comes with a number of different plugs and you can just um, connect it right here to a uh, standard USB port, which since I'm on a Mac, I'm going to be using an adapter for, and then you can turn it on. So I am going to be opening a slightly modified version of the standard file that it comes with. It comes with uh, eight standard presets here. I just deleted them and added the call frequencies for two meter and 70 centimeters. Um, and the way that you do that is you can just click on any of these frequencies and modify them. I'll get into that a little bit more in a second. So the first things that you need to do when you get this radio is you're gonna wanna go over to the um, option setting tab over here and you're gonna look at two parts in particular. One is going to be key function and you wanna make sure that all of these locks, knob lock, keyboard lock, those are off and not on. If you got this new, they might be on and in order to use the handheld properly, you need those off. You can click okay there. The other thing I'm gonna recommend doing right off the bat is go over to power on. Here you can actually change when it powers on to go from the default interface to a custom character set. You can also import pictures, etc. And so you can make that say whatever you want. It normally says my call sign there. I just deleted for anonymity. And then when you start it up, it's going to offer a couple of different default channels to go through. So I have those set up as my, uh, my zone one uh, you know, calling frequencies here, but I think it's important to note that you probably want to have a VFO here. So if you're going to use this in standard analog mode, then the VFO is going to be more useful than the standard digital presets that it comes with. So this is the way I set up mine just, um, you know, to get started right away. So you can do whatever you want there, but that's what I recommend. The only other standard thing is turning off the key lock. So if you're already pretty comfortable with how to use repeaters, then you can probably just go right in here and start to add your channels. So you can go in, double click on any of these columns here, and then if you wanna add uh, a repeater, I'm just gonna make one up here, repeater A. Um, you can then modify your receive and transmit frequencies. Um, you can change you know, the various types. So analog repeater, change your transmit power, bandwidth, and then the CTCSS for the tone signal to get um, access to that repeater so you would open this up here and then modify to whatever that might be and that's how you can get you know start start entering repeaters directly into your presets and then another thing I forgot to mention is you can then add that to your scan list which will allow you to gain access to it in scan mode so there are different zones that you can assign your channels to to help you know organize them as you see fit and that's going to be important as you build lots and lots of channels which we're going to do in this video and then in the scan list we can go in here and um, add any channels to our scan list to reorganize them as we see fit, up, down, etc., cetera, um, and set up our scan list that way. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and delete this, and my goal today is to import some directories of channels from some known lists. So first of all, I wanna show you how garbage the Bridgecom um, educational system is. This is Bridgecom's university, which they brag about as you know, some hundred dollar value, which is just all of their YouTube videos pasted into this nonsensical order that doesn't answer any questions on how to get actually set up. So completely skip this. So what I'm doing is I'm going to be importing channel information from two places. One is the Bridgecom website where they actually do have some state specific code plugs. So I live in Connecticut and fortunately there's been one person who's uploaded a set of code plugs. So I'm going to be using that to help generate my channel list. And then the other source of channels is the Connecticut Aries. They're actually the ones that recommended this radio to me as a, as a first radio to get access to the digital modes in DMR. And so they have a code plug for all of the emergency relevant uh, digital repeaters in Connecticut. Once you download those, you'll have these new, what are they called, RDT or something files. And so those are displayed right here. 
And so I am going to get back into their CPS, trying to comp try to compile all of these different sources into a single document. I haven't found a way to directly import different RDT files into a single one. So what we're going to be doing is exporting these as CSV files, organizing them that way, and then re-importing. So first things first is I'm going to export my channel zone and scan lists from my original programming file. And I'm going to do that in a folder that I'm calling radio files. And I'm going to call this radio channel zone, radio zone, scan list, radio scan list. So those are the three things I'm going to export. All right. Since I'm using this virtual box business, I also had to download open office and that's what I'm using to open these CSV files because I don't have an Excel license on this computer. So this is what I'm going to use to populate. Now I'm going to do the same thing for these other RDT files that I downloaded, the code plugs or whatever. So this is the Bridgecom one. Thank you, KC1KUI in Vernon, Connecticut. This is very helpful. Um, and as you can see, this has, in addition to, it starts off with digitals, but it has a number of analog channels, including some of your standard call frequencies and then a bunch of local repeaters. So I'm gonna end up reformatting this a little bit to make sense for my location, but this has a lot of analog information that the Aries digital list didn't have, which is why I'm going to try to blend the two together into a single code plug or whatever you call it for my radio. So similarly, tool, export, I'm gonna do channel zone and scan list. All right, so I'm just gonna save these as CT channel, CT zone and CT scan list. All right, so when you open our first original channel list, there's gonna be very little on this. Uh, make sure it's delimited by commas here so it opens properly. So there we go, this is my original radio channel list. And what I'm gonna do is tack on the channel lists from Aries and CT. Okay, so here we have 788 channels that I'm going to copy and paste into my other one. One exception I'm going to do is change all of these uh, numbers accordingly. And I still have my VFOs on the bottom. There we go. Oh, except these uh, channels got messed up. I'll change those later. They're going to be pasted over anyway. So now I'm going to go over to the CT channel, do the same thing. There may or may not be duplicates in here. I'm not even sure. Okay, so this completes my channel list. And so I still have my initial two from my first file. I have the additional ones from Connecticut Aries, and then I have the Connecticut code plug from Bridgecom's website um, at the end. So in, in total, I have you know almost a thousand different channels here that I'm going to be programming in. Okay, so there's a critical step that I left out of the video when I was first recording this, and that is when you save your modified um, CSV file for any of these functions, you need to make sure you have a couple of options checked and those options can be found under the edit filter settings. If you do not do this, you are going to get an error and it's not going to work and you're going to have to start over. So click quote all text cells and make sure you have that checked. Okay. And now that's going to save a file that we can read properly. Next, I'm going to do the scan list. So the standard scan list here, it's going to be a very simple document. Again, here's my original scan list. So it looks like Aries breaks there down into three regions within Connecticut, and I will keep that organization because it looks great. Again, thank you to all of you who put in the work to do this because there's no way I would be able to figure this out without, without you guys paving the way. So shout out to you guys for your hard work. I don't know who you are. Okay, this one has a number of its own scan lists, and I'm going to modify these for sure because it looks like the sky was based out of uh, Vernon which is not near me. And then it looks like the rest is regional. You know, you have the ISS, some simplex call frequencies, which will be a little bit redundant. So I'm gonna leave this for now, but this is something that I will go back and modify and chances are you guys will have to do the same for your own. All right, saving the updated scan list. Finally, zones. So Aries is nicely organized by various towns and regions. So the CT zone also shows one called home. All right. 
93 zones, save. And making sure quote all text cells is saved. I'll now go back and attempt to import that new channel list I created, new channel. All right, <laughs> there we go. All right, that was a little bit frustrating with the error, um, but it looks like that has worked for the channel import. I'm gonna go ahead and repeat that for the zone and scan lists as well. Oh, also real quick, what you'll wanna do is register on, uh, register your DMR on radio ID so you can just Go ahead and make a, a make an account here. You scroll down, you agree to the terms, click register. You'll have to upload a PDF of your amateur radio license. And then for me, it was within an hour. Um, they came back and approved that account. And once you have that, then you can go into your um, digital radio ID list. I'm not gonna click on mine for anonymity, but you can then enter your radio ID number. So I have my radio ID number programmed in here. I have not yet imported my digital contact list. Okay, so actually real quick, just to show you how to download the DMR database, you go to radioid.net, search for the dump files, and then we are going to look for the user.csv file, and we're gonna save that. Tool, import, digital contact list import all right now we got everybody uh everybody's contact info saved in here so i'm just going to confirm that my radio is connected it's com port 3 and then i'm going to click this little button up here which is right to radio and wish me luck let's give it a try all right, so here we are unplugged from the computer. It doesn't work if it's plugged in, so make sure you uh, unplug it. I can now scroll through the different zones that we have here. Uh, and when you turn this, it goes through the various favorites that are on that list. Highs in the upper 70s. All right. Tuesday, mostly sunny. Highs around 80. You know, sorry, my video's crappy. All the videos out there are crappy. Um, let me know in the comments what your experiences are like, and uh, good luck with your new radio, everyone. <laughs> See you out there.